Welcome back to the channel everyone. Hopefully you're all doing well. I'm gonna do a review on probably one of my favorite waterfowl shotguns that I've ever used. And this is my Browning Synergy Wicked Wing Waterfowl Edition 30 inch barrel. Um, just before we get started, let's make sure that it's safe. Very easy with a break action. It is safe. Let's jump right into it. This is a four year review like a, a, a long-term review of this shotgun. I have loved it from day one. And I'm gonna go through from stock all the way up the barrel of things I love all about it, things I wish Browning had done a little bit different, but just kind of like my overall opinion of how it's done over the last four years and what I like about it. And uh, so starting off with the uh, uh, recoil uh, pad or recoil reducer, um, on the stock here it looks kind of funny but it really does work i have run everything out of this from three and a half inch to three inch to two and three quarters uh, on the range doing clay days and this really helps to absorb quite a bit of felt uh, recoil um when even using uh three and a half inch shells with this uh it doesn't really feel like it kicks it's more of a push and that's because this is an eight pound uh, shotgun. It's not light, uh, but for field hunting, not really an issue. For longer hikes, you can definitely feel the weight, especially if you have to hike into a marsh spot if you're hunting. Uh, so this is why I tend to use this one a lot for uh, cornfield hunting, uh, hay fields for geese, uh, as well as uh, uh, hunting over oat fields. Just, um, it really is a tried and true, reliable shotgun. Now, when I move up to the stock here, this is one thing that I wish Browning had done a little bit better on this one. It's a waterfowl gun. It's not a competition trap gun. Um, so I understand they're trying to make it fit more people. Uh, but at the same time, I'm just not a really huge fan of how it looks. But when I was picking it up and shouldering it compared to everything else, it just came up really, really well. Fits really amazing to me. So, I mean, in terms of the look, I may not like the look of this stock, but at the same time, the fit and how it feels is just absolutely incredible. So, I mean, that's just vanity on my part. Um, and if somebody uh, out there has ever used this and increased it, let me know. I've never played around with it. Um, never had to. It just feels good for me right out of the box. Uh, so that was... Uh, kind of my opinion on that. Moving up, um, it uses an interesting ejection system. And so basically you have springs on either side and basically it helps to power your ejectors. Very powerful. Uh, I've never had a failure to eject. They clear the shells out of the way really quick. Um, but it's still not powerful enough if you wanted to catch them to stop them from going uh, all over the place. You can still put your hand here, catch them, control where they're going. It, 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 but it's still, it's very reliable. Um, in terms of the coloring, I love it. The Cerakote on this, they did such a great job. I have not been easy on this. I've used this as a tool uh, to go on a lot of goose hunts, a lot of duck hunts with, uh, out to the clay range. And it just, it looks like it's brand new. I mean, the Cerakoting that they did was, uh, was a good job. I mean, usually by this point, I'd be expecting to see some scratches and some nicks and uh, nothing, nothing. It's held up really well. Um, you get a really nice logo here on it uh, with the uh, Wicked Wing uh, graphics and uh, a duck that's kind of cupped up coming into land with the Browning signature. Um, a really nice large trigger guard here where uh, you have the uh, Browning emblem etched into it right there. And just so everyone knows, these are snap, uh, snap caps um, just to kind of prevent the wear and tear on my firing pins. Uh, I'm not a firearms expert, never going to try to pretend to be one, but uh, honestly, uh, I've been told that it helps to reduce the wear and tear and this is something that I want to 
last for a very long time. So uh, in terms of for uh, dry firing it, um, I've always been told to put the snap caps in there for that very reason to uh, uh, depress the springs. So in terms of this here, it's a very interesting trigger. Most of my shotguns have more of a rounded trigger. This trigger right here, um, uh, it has a really, really nice kind of flat feeling. And so with the tang safety, which is very easy to manipulate, also you have the barrel selector, which is pretty common for most over and unders. Uh, if you own a Winchester 101, this is pretty much identical to the same thing. Um, and uh, very easy to use selector. Uh, I am a fan of having like the S safe green and the F for fire red, but in terms of this here, they just Cerakoted it over. So it's more so learning the safety of the, the firearm and always presuming that it's loaded like any other firearm. But in terms of this here, the trigger, it's nice and crisp. It's not too soft. It's not too hard. Um, it's everything that you would expect out of a uh, waterfowl shotgun. But the reset on it is really, really nice. Like you can just get onto a bird and have two very, very quick shots. Yep, yep. Down in the hole, down in the hole in the ground. Reloading it, um, you learn how to get very proficient with it. Reloading tends to be something that I've learned to kind of uh, work at with this and I've gone pretty quick. Yep, turn around, turn around, right on the ground. Yeah. One tall one out front, out front. I got him, I got him, I got him. Got him! But uh, there's times where I have kind of got one shell in and trying to figure out where the other one's supposed to go and by that time, they're gone. So um, there are some learning curves to it. And I mean, the old argument is like, why use two barrels when you can have one barrel but with three shots? And uh, uh, for me, I don't know, and maybe somebody can help me in the comment section, but with an over and under, even though I get two shots, I feel like I'm more accurate with those two shots than I am in terms of an average, uh, using a semi or a pump action with three shots. I, I don't know what that is about an over and under, but I do find that the two shots that I do get really do count. Um, but again, uh, with the new semis that are out there, they're so quick to re reload and get one back into the chamber after you've gone through three. They're, they're just getting better and better to use. Same with the pumps out there. Um, and that's just my personal opinion like of uh, being around my friends when we're hunting and seeing what they're using and kind of going back and forth. But in terms of this here, um, you really do kind of learn it uh, to how to load it very quickly. Um, and again, the one thing I said at the beginning, you can run three and a half inch shells, you can run three inch shells, and you can run two and three quarters. It's not fussy one bit at all. Um, and the choke tubes that come with it uh, are the Browning choke tubes. Now, I have used aftermarket choke tubes in this, and uh, I've used everything from uh, Carlson uh, Creamore choke tubes to the Kix uh, choke tubes. Um, and I, I had great success with both of them, but I've gone back to the Browning stock choke tubes. Let me know your opinions in the comment section. If you feel that uh, stock choke tubes are good or if you prefer aftermarket choke tubes. With this shotgun, the choke tubes that came with it were actually surprisingly really good. And I've, I've shot a lot of birds with this shotgun with the aftermarket choke tubes that I have for it. And I've also shot a lot of birds with the factory choke tubes. Um, the factory choke tubes, you get a uh, full choke, a modified, and an improved cylinder. Uh, I tend to run a improved cylinder for my first shot, a modified uh, for my second shot, and my belief is 
as they're coming in, my first shot is usually at the bird that's closest to me. And as the birds are leaving my group, I want it a little bit tighter. Um, uh, or if I'm shooting at a bird and I miss, usually my second shot is like I've corrected it and then usually I'm more on target uh, with the modified. So I do like that. Also, you I mean you can run any kind of choke option you want. You can run two modifieds, you can run two uh, long range ch uh, choke tubes, you can run two close range ch uh, choke tubes. And actually, I'm actually looking for another uh, improved cylinder or even cylinder because uh, there's this one spot that I was hunting this season and it was just this little pond tucked into these tight trees and the birds would come in just right on top of me and almost uh, running two type of choke was kind of uh, making it more difficult. So um, it was a lot of fun and actually I got into quite a few teal there and that was that was a fun hunt that, that day this year. So really, really looking forward to uh, kind of like playing around with more choke tubes out there, especially now that my province has a turkey season. There's uh, now in New Brunswick, we have turkeys. There's a turkey draw. Um, I put my name in for it last year. I was not successful, but uh, I was able to get out to the range and pattern this using a turkey choke, and it was a lot of fun. Now, nobody ever warned me about uh, turkey shot, and uh, I didn't think there was going to be anything different, but there is there's something different in those things, and I don't know what it is, but I was pretty happy to have uh, this pad back here to help reduce the, uh, the recoil, but... Yeah, I cannot wait to get a turkey hunting. I'm hoping that I get uh, drawn this year. Uh, it would be an absolute amazing experience. And the last thing that was kind of for me, I don't, I wouldn't call it like something that I, I would personally call as uh, a, a negative, but it just, it wasn't working for me. The white bead, I used it for a little while. I did definitely shoot some, some birds with it uh used on the clay range but i really do find my eye works better with some form of color so i just got one of these magnet uh kind of like front uh sights that just clips on to the front there um and uh it works really well i mean i know browning uh makes their own uh front bead sight that's uh a different uh colors and it's always been kind of like something I want to order. Which I think it would just make it a little bit more cleaner. But at the end of the day, that's, again, another vanity thing. That works fine. I've shot a lot of birds with that. Um, but all in all, I've just been absolutely thrilled with this. The only reason why I haven't been using it as much is when I'm hunting with larger groups. I find that if I'm in either a large group situation or if I'm in a fairly deep uh, pit blind that was dug a little bit deeper than what they wanted to, there's two things that I find that's kind of difficult operating this. One is if you're hunting with a bunch of people and you're sitting down and you're trying to load this, you're kind of always having to try and cant the barrel down uh, to let the shells slide in. So as I throw the snap caps in there, you can see they, they flow in there very easily. But the moment that it, it's tipped up, and if you're sitting down and you're trying to kind of get your barrel over the A-frame, it can be a bit of a pain, especially if you're the middle person in the blind. Um, also, if you're in a pit blind situation and you're a little bit lower down to the ground and your barrel is not quite able to get over the pit itself, uh, again, you just you find yourself doing weird things to just try to kind of like get it loaded in time for the next rip of birds to come in. Let him go. So that was like one thing that kind of like made me go back to when I'm hunting either with larger groups of people uh, and I'm in the middle of the row or uh, in a pit blind, um, I tend to prefer a semi because you can just sit down with a semi and just load up and obviously 
keep the barrel pointing straight up and you don't have to worry about doing anything weird. Um, but at the same time, uh, when I hunt out of an A-frame, or sorry, out of a layup line, this is actually really easy to use a layup line because when you sit up, you can actually like bring the shotgun down, open it up, and there's enough of a slope that you can easily feed them in there. Like they both want to go in there. And usually I have two in my hands so I can reload fairly quickly and get back onto target. Get him. So I'm still going to continue using this. It's still my favorite, favorite shotgun I've ever shot. Um, and I, I, I love it. And I mean, the more I use it, the more I'm impressed by how it just stays feeling like it's brand new. Um, but uh, once you, if you have one of these, once you do breaking in, it, it does, it does feel way better. Um, the action feels way smoother once it's broken in. Um, and uh, it's just a joy, a joy to hunt with. So, but at the end of the day, I just, do you need something like this to go hunting? Absolutely not. Is it, is it nice to own something like this that has a ton of sentimental value? Absolutely. Um, I'm always gonna own this. It's just an absolute, uh, for me, one of my favorite shotguns I've ever used. But again, let me know what your favorite shotguns are in the comment section. Let me know if you've ever used an over and under for waterfowl hunting. Love to hear all the comments, everything you guys have to say. Um, thank you all so much for the support, the likes, the subscribes.